Hello, my name's Alastair Baird from the Dark Room in Cheltenham and today I'm going to look at 35mm film cameras and in particular what can go wrong with them. Now there are loads of really great videos out there that show you how to get the best out of a film camera uh, but I'm going to focus on those particular problems because occasionally at the laboratory we can get customers bringing in a film where maybe, maybe the film is broken in the camera they uh, aren't able to rewind it. So I'm going to do some close-ups using this Nikon FM2, which is a very manual camera and will have features that are, are common throughout those sort of type of cameras. So uh, let's go to the first of those close-ups and see how you can make the best out of a bad situation. A good indicator that the camera is properly loaded with film is the rewind handle. Here the advance lever is wound three times, but if you watch the rewind knob, you'll see it's not rotating as it should. If you've only just loaded the film, then it's probably not attached to the take-up spool on the right-hand side. So, open the camera back, and here you can see that although the film leader is pulled across, it's come undone from the take-up spool. No harm done. These spools are always a bit fiddly, and every manufacturer used a slightly different design. Try again and keep a finger on the film to keep it flat as you wind on. Remember you'll have to fire the shutter between each film advance. In order to do this you may have to switch the camera shutter to a manual setting. Usually that's a 60th or 125th of a second. Once you've closed the camera give it at least two more complete winding cycles so that you've advanced the leader out of the way. If you check the film counter, you'll see that it's now set to zero and you're ready to go. Now here's a different situation because you've been out taking pictures, you know the camera was working fine, you even checked the rewind handle was turning when you advanced the film, but now it isn't. Well, in order to find out what's going on inside, you're going to have to open the back of the camera. You can't do that in daylight because you'll ruin the film by fogging it to light. So you're going to have to find somewhere in complete darkness. Maybe a cupboard, you know, is light tight. Now, I can't show you anything in complete darkness. So I'm going to switch the visuals to black and white and we'll pretend it's a poor man's infrared film. So here's what you're going to need to do in the dark by feel alone. You'll still need to press in the release button, usually on the base plate of the camera, to disengage to the gears and allow you to pull the film out. It looks easy in the light, doesn't it? Stay calm. There's nothing worse than sweaty hands or tears over your film because you're going to save those pictures. So you've ended up with a neat roll of film and you're still in the cupboard. Now what? Now before you shut yourself in the cupboard in the dark, you planned ahead because you're going to need to put at least one length of film into something entirely light proof. Now these frosted film pots are obviously no good. They're not light proof. Even this sort with a grey lid, I'm not convinced. But here's the one completely black lid and the lid clicks down really positively. But before you put the light on, double check there's no film still left in the camera. Then here's the golden tip, label the film pot. If you're taking it to a lab to be processed, they're really going to need to know what's inside in order to give it the correct development. Next, put some tape around the lid to stop it from being popped open. So film pots are fine, but what if you've got no black film pots? If you've got loose film, or even a damaged 35mm cassette, then silver kitchen foil is a great solution, because it's completely opaque. Now you're still in the dark at this point, but roll it snugly around the film so that it's completely light tight. It doesn't need to be entombed, just enough to keep the light out.
Surely everyone who's used a film camera has done this. You thought the camera was empty and, oh, no. Unfortunately, you've already ruined three or four frames at least, but don't despair entirely. Don't throw the film away. This section is ruined because it's seen so much light, but on the right-hand side, the tightness of the spooled film can keep out most of the light and there may be some frames that can be salvaged from it. You've got two choices, depending on how far through the film you are, or how important those photos are anyway. If you've only shot two or three frames, then you may as well just start again from this point, having written off the first part of the film. Shoot the remainder of the film as normal. Well there you go, there's some suggestions as to how to make the best of a bad situation, but hopefully they're not going to be problems that you'll come up against. Um, if you've got any other ideas that uh, can help people out of a situation like that, then perhaps post it in the section below there. Um, next time around, I'm going to look at 120 medium format film cameras and problems that can crop up with those. But in the meantime, enjoy your photography. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.